all right guys welcome back to day 27 before i start this video i just want to tell you a couple of things firstly i've been trying to record this video like three or four times but there's some like construction work going around my house and it's just like really frustrating because every time i'm in, in middle of video like one minute in or two minute in they just start like drilling stuff into walls and i don't know why it's just happening above my apartment so that's pretty uh, frustrating but anyways hopefully they won't do it again and they haven't done it for the last 10 minutes so i'm kind of hoping i'll be able to finish this video before that and the second thing is that i'm recording this video that is the day 27 after a week of day 26 because i had a cough problem and uh, if you if you are hearing my voice and it's a little bit changed it's because i still have this little bit of uh, <coughs> cough inside my throat so anyways uh, let's get started with the uh, learning about how to style our Kinter window and how to style our melody music player uh, using fonts, uh, background, color and stuff like that. And in the next video, you are going to be learning about things and stuff, but that's for the next video. So in the current video, let's uh, get started by learning about the fonts. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to change the font of this status bar to something else and maybe make it a little bit uh, more italic uh, instead of just straight. So let's do that. So that is pretty easy to do. I'm just going to add one more parameter and it's called font. And then this requires three, three main values. First, what kind of font do you want to use? So for right now, I'm just going to write that I want to use the times font. And then what is the size of the font that you want to use? So I'm just going to write 10. 10 is the font size. This is in pixels. And uh, then what kind of style do you want the font to have? So I want it to have a uh, italic style. So I'm just going to write italic and then we can go to run and click on reload and see if it works. Uh, as you can see, this has changed to a different font. It's size 10 and it's in italic. Now let's change the size to a little bit more, uh, maybe 15 so that we can see the difference. And as you can see, it's more increased now and uh, we can change this italic to even uh, something else like maybe bold. And let's reload it and you can see that it has changed to bold so anyways I just want to show it to you once more this uh, font parameter in this uh, total length uh, label maybe so for that but before that I just want to tell you that what kind of fonts can you use inside the Kinter window and what kind of styles like bolds italic what kind of styles can you use inside the Kinter window so I'm just gonna paste a comment over here which is going to tell you what kind of fonts you can use and what kind of styles you can use inside the Kinter window so the fonts are Arial, Comic Sans, Fixed System, MS Sans Serif, uh, Times which we used right now, Verdana and the styles are normal, bold, italic, underline, over strike. So just, just to give you one more example, I'm just going to scroll down to maybe another label. So let's actually find the label. Oh, not like this. All right. Not this one. I want another one. Uh, yeah, this, this will work. So I'm just, just going to write font equals to and, and then in this one, I'm just going to choose uh, Verdana maybe. Verdana and I'm going to put the size as maybe 18 and I want it to be bold or let's let's uh, call it under strike just to show you a different one I'm not probably going to use it inside our uh, program all right uh, oh under strike is unknown let's scroll up to see what kind of fonts can we use or oh, it's called over strike not under strike so I'm just going to copy this and what other symbol hey let's use actually Arial instead of Verdana because that looks a little bit more better so instead of under strike, let's change it to over strike and instead of Verdana, let's just use Arial and instead of 8, we'll make it 10 also. So let's run it now. And as you can see, over strike is basically it cuts through the uh, length of the length of the label. So it doesn't help us much. But if you're writing some kind of a paragraph or something, maybe that will it, it, it will help. Maybe I don't know. So <laughs> let's change it to maybe bold. So that we can see it properly let's reload it mm. all right this looks actually a little bit more better but i'm not going to include all of this stuff inside our uh, inside our final program because i just wanted to show it to you that how fonts work how background colors worked and stuff uh, the last thing i want to show you is how to change the background color of maybe anything that you want all right how to change the let's say how to change the color of this font right here of total length so for that you can just use another parameter is called fg 
I don't know why they named it FG. F is probably for a font. I have no idea what G is for. But anyways, we can just name it red or something. You can use hex values even over here. You know, hex values are values that has like hashtag and then they are values like six values in front of it, like six F, 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 F or something like that. So it has hashtag and then six values after it. So anyways, let's reload it and see if it uh, changes our font color. So yeah, it changes it to red. We can change it to green or use any kind of hex values. Now we are going to change the background color, the background color of a button. So let me just search for a button maybe, button and let's see. All right, this will work. So I'm just gonna click over here and for changing the background of anything, it can be like literally anything of, it can be this whole window, it can be this uh, list box, it can be anything. If you want to change the background of anything, you can just write BG, which stands for, stands for background. And actually, you know what? FG can stand for font ground but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Anyways, I'm just gonna change it to maybe green. Let's uh, reload it. And as you can see, the font color has changed to green. And let me actually try and change the color of this uh, frame also. See, let's see if it works on frames or not. I'm just gonna write BG. And then I'm going to change it to maybe blue. Let's reload it. And as you can see, the background of the middle frame has been changed to blue color. So anyways, uh, we don't need all of this. I just wanted to show you when we get into themes and when we get into advanced styling, uh, what is happening behind the scenes, how uh, are the packages that we are gonna use, how they're actually changing all of this stuff behind the scenes. I just wanted you to get an idea. All right, so I'm just going to undo everything that we have done instead of, uh, let's remove this. Let's remove this. Uh, all right, and now instead of maybe we're gonna call it 10 and times 10 and maybe I'm gonna call it italic and let's reload it, italic, the spelling is wrong. And yeah, one more thing, if you just write italic over here, it's not gonna work. If you want to change it to italic, you have it to, you have to give it a font name, otherwise it's just not gonna show up. So, all right, I'm just gonna include this one, which we'll says welcome to Melody. And uh, now I'm going to make this a little, a little bit more better because right now you can see the the buttons are not that good and uh, the the font is even it doesn't look that good and uh, this this uh, volume bar is not that great looking so we are going to take two main steps to uh, make sure that our gui looks a lot better the second step is going to be shown in the next video but for this video we are going to make it one level better and in the next video we are just going to blow everything apart and make it look amazing all right but by the end of this video our still a ui is going to look much more better than what it is looking right now so how are we going to do that we are going to use something known as ttk so we are going to write from kinter import and it's called ttk so what is this TTK? This uh, package is inside, this class is inside the Tinker package and this stands for uh, themed Kinter. So what it does is it improves the looks of the buttons and different widgets. And how do you use it? It's very, very easy. You just go in front of the label and the buttons that you have used and add this TTK dot uh, in front of the label and the buttons. So we are just gonna add this in front of everything that we have and uh, yeah so let's let's do it so first i'm just going to add it in front of every label that we have uh all right let's add it over here let's add it over here and i think we are done with the labels because we only had like three labels and after that i just want to add it after every button so let's write button and let's write ttk 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 and i think let's let's first reload this and see how our current thing looks. Let's reload it. And as you can see, now our buttons look a little bit better and our uh, font has changed a little bit. Uh, now I'm going to put TTK in front of this uh, scale and add and delete buttons and you're gonna see a very, very major change. So let's uh, add it in front of, uh, wait a minute, I think I skipped a couple of buttons, right? Okay, I did it. I have just not put this in front of rewind button and the volume and in front of the scale and uh, yeah in front of the add button and the delete button yeah i think that's pretty much it 
So let's reload it and see how our final uh, GUI looks. Not the final, but the second best GUI looks. So now you can see that the add and delete buttons actually look decent and these play, stop and pause buttons look a little bit better. The volume um, is looking better, but it's showing some kind of error, which we are just going to fix in a second. And uh, yeah, so our, our GUI is starting to look a little bit better with the kind of bluish kind of a background on uh, focus. So yeah, let's actually fix this error, which says invalid literal for integer with base 10, 47.67. So whenever we change this volume, it's gonna give us an error. So why is this happening? So let's go to the function, which is called set underscore volume function. I think that was the name over here, right? And it says invalid literal for integer. So what is happening right now is that we are getting uh, some kind of value and when it's divided by 100, it's not, it's not able to convert it into an integer. So instead of that, we are just gonna write float, not gloat, <laughs> we're just gonna write float so that the volume that we get over here is actually in a float instead of an integer, which we need. Uh, so that's why this volume is in float right now. And when we put it inside the set underscore volume function is gonna give us the perfect volume. So let's reload it now. And all right, now if we change the volume, it's not gonna give us any kind of error, which works perfect for us. So yeah, guys, this is pretty much it for this video. Uh, in the next video, we are gonna learn, actually, let me just show it to you how, what, 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 what are the differences that are gonna be when we uh, actually add a theme to our Kinter window. So let me just show it to you. So right now our Kinter window kind of looks like this. And in the next video, we are gonna be changing it to a different kind of a UI. So even though this doesn't look very, very bad, uh, but this is just a little bit more better. As you can see, uh, it has a very cool volume functionality. It has very cool delete and add buttons. And uh, yeah, it has a very different kind of background. The font size is a little bit more. So yeah, we'll uh, make sure that we add all this kind of stuff in the next video. And yeah, I'm really excited about day 28. So I'll see you tomorrow. Peace out.